Welcome to the Dennis Report. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dennis Atchison. It is November 16th, 2021, and this is an episode of As I See It. In recent elections, provincial, municipal, and federal, a lot of attention has been given to women, just women, in politics. Look at this headline. This is from the recent municipal election in Yeocum. Clearly, something has changed, and there are more women getting elected to key positions in politics. And here's this from a self-organized group called Women for 50%. This is not about men versus women. This is about gender-balanced politics. It's about ensuring our political representatives better reflect the actual people they represent. It's about the female voice being heard and respected. Their claim identifies only women can represent women. And implicitly, that means that men are incapable of representing women. It may be with a touch of irony that women are capable of representing men, but that's not that clear. Following their logic then, does that mean only blacks can represent blacks? Elders represent elders? Young people represent young people? Or how about this? that only rich people can represent rich people. They claim in their rhetoric on their webpage that it's about the female voice being heard and respected. But is representational politics really the only path to better government? To me, these people confuse equity of access with equity of outcome. Every citizen has equity of access. We can all decide to run for government at whatever level we think we want to run at. But to want to control the outcome, to want to control the results, to want that 50%, that's a whole other thing. And it goes completely against the democratic process. Tiffany McCabe French, who was a candidate down in the St. John area in the last municipal election, is convinced that more women in politics leads to better decision-making and better policy. And that's her direct quote. McKay French complains how women are called Barbie in the provincial legislature. And quote, nobody says those things about a man, right? Well, Ms. French, how could you possibly have missed all the comments about this guy's hair? Or how about this guy's hair? How could you have missed all the nasty comments about this former Prime Minister's appearance. And if you do a quick search on the internet, you'll find something that looks like this on Prime Minister Trudeau's appearance. Oh, Miss McKay French, how did you miss all that? No, it's not good to call an elected official a Barbie. I completely agree. But you have to ask why McKay French and the reporter that covered the story, Diana Chavez, failed to identify who did this misogynistic, gender-biased name-calling. It was Elizabeth Weir, then the leader of the Provincial New Democratic Party in New Brunswick and the MLA for St. John Harbor. Conveniently, both Chavez and French left this fact out. What if a man had called Miss Blaney a Barbie? Can you imagine the response? And yet, in that same CBC article is a photo of Elizabeth Weir as one of the founders of Women for 50% Lobby Group. Well, by the way, here's a photo of the Barbie, published in Brunswick News, when she and Liberal T.J. Burke were voted New Brunswick's most attractive MLAs. Several women lobby groups were created on social media to influence voters. Here are two examples, Women for Fredericton and Women Plus in Politics Fredericton. I checked with Elections New Brunswick if lobby groups and influencer groups like this had to register with Elections New Brunswick because they're trying to control the outcome of an election. And unions, large-scale business, activist groups all have to register as a third party in provincial elections. Elections New Brunswick responded, there is no legislation to limit or identify these influencers. 
Basically, they're free to say and do whatever they want in a municipal election. One of those groups, the Women Plus in Politics Fredericton, is led by Kathy Zwicker and was getting an awful lot of free media in the Daily Gleaner in Fredericton area. I emailed Ms. Wicker about some of that media coverage and I wanted to know if a story was accurate. Here's some snippets from an email exchange with her. Hi, in relation to the news story yesterday in the Daily Gleaner with Don McPherson, which was March 30th, 2021, I had a question. Was the event for all candidates, just women candidates? This is unclear in the reporting. Can you clarify, please, and thanks? Oh, and thanks for all you're doing. Ms. Wicker wrote back, to be clear, we did not contact all candidates, nor did we contact all women candidates. So I responded, okay, follow-up question, please. Given you did not contact all candidates or all female candidates, how did you discern who to invite and who not to invite? Thanks. Well, Ms. Wicker fired back, quote, obviously there is something that has upset you. Please let me know what that is, and I will try to address it in a more direct way. She then goes on an email for over 500 words to school me on the movement, listing several organizations dedicated to more women in politics. Quote, we know that when their voice is at the table, the conversation changes in both tenor and content. Different decisions are made. Well, first off, if I was upset, I would say so. Secondly, she provided no examples to support her claim that different decisions are made. Meanwhile, the other influencer lobby group, Women for Fredericton, were taking huge swipes at men on city council, and they specifically targeted men. Remember, all these groups claim this is not about men versus women. That's from Women for 50%. It's about female voice being heard and respected. Well then, check this out. On a hot issue to fund homelessness strategy in the Fredericton area, four council people voted against the initial proposal. Women for Fredericton focused only on the gender of the four council people. Four days later, after an amendment was made, the vote for the funding was passed by these same council people, except for one person who voted against it. Women for Fredericton made no mention of this fact. Actually, they made it very clear their animosity towards men. From their own webpage, they use the phrase male-dominated frequently and claims it's no surprise that a male-dominated council also appoints more men to city committees than women, suggesting the key criteria is gender, not availability, skills, or experience. Those evil men, how dare they dominate! There's no legislation or way to stop this type of social influencing through social media during municipal elections. In 2020, municipal candidate Margot Shepard, Fredericton Ward 1, posted this on her Facebook page. Quote, we all know these guys. Let's lop off the truck nuts and get moving with solutions. Ouch, what if I like my truck nuts? Is castrating men the only solution? Oh, by the way, if you don't know what truck nuts are, take a look, and apologies in advance. What if a male made a castrating remark about a female candidate, or a female in a position of authority? Here's a CBC story on Mayor Don Arnold and her disclosure of her re-election campaign financing. Quote, developers large and small, the Irvings and her own family, are among contributors on a list released last week. And as for women doing politics differently, Ms. Arnold is quoted this way. She won't recuse herself when council considers items related to her donors, since she doesn't view the money as something that would sway her view. In Fredericton, Kate Rogers promised she would disclose her campaign contributions. But after she won, there was this headline. Rogers collected $24,805 for the campaign, but won't identify donors after all. Her reasoning, I feel it isn't fair for me to make public the names of campaign donors. 
given that there are no regulations requiring the disclosure of donor information at the municipal campaign level. I cannot assume that all donors expect their name to be disclosed. So why promise before and during the election campaign that you would? Women for Fredericton lobby influencer groups stated, it's no surprise a male-dominated council appoints more men to city council committees than they do women. Well, how about this story? None of the newly elected women were named to chair positions for the new city council led by Mayor Kate Rogers. She explained, typically you draw from the experience on your council when you're appointing chairs to standing committees. There was not a peep on social media influencer groups on this huge about face. Andrea Johnson was a conservative candidate for the federal riding of Frederick to Oromocto, and she was the former executive director of the Provincial Conservative Party of New Brunswick. In July of 2020, CBC ran a story on the incorrectly accepted 30,000 plus in donations to the Conservative Party over a two-year period during Ms. Johnson's management. CBC identified, for more than 40 years it's been the law that donations to political parties over $100 have to come from a bank account or a credit card belonging to the donor. The rule is meant to help establish the actual contributor. Now that she and the party were exposed, Ms. Johnson responded that contributors were refunded because the two-year-long mistake was now discovered. A short while later, Ms. Johnson became the federal conservative candidate for Frederick and Oromocto. During the last municipal election, I brought attention to the many candidates with close ties to the Green Party. In the Fredericton area, there was about six or eight, and across the province, there were many more. And I simply asked, is this a good thing or a bad thing? One of those candidates, Margot Shepard, the lop the truck nuts off person, took issue with me after the election and sent me this personal message. Dennis, I've read your various digs at me over the course of the election. Digs I did not respond to or ever think about making against you. To be honest, I'm very disappointed that such a well-read, thoughtful person as you would stoop to this. In that respect, Ms. Shepard sounds an awful lot like Ms. Wicker, who accused me of being upset when I wasn't. But Ms. Shepard goes on, and this is where it gets interesting. You're maligning me for allegedly having close relationship with the Green Party is completely baseless. I have no role with the Green Party of New Brunswick or Canada. Simply put, Ms. Shepard's claim is not true. Here's a story from the CBC in 2015. Margot Shepard, a former Green Party supporter. From 2017 to 2019, Ms. Shepard and her husband donated just over $10,000 to the Green Party of New Brunswick. She donated just over $7,000 and he donated just over $3,000. And when former Green MP Jenica Atwin left and shifted over to the Liberal Party, Ms. Shepard wrote on Ms. Atwin's Facebook page, quote, I won't condemn your move, but may we consider my Green Party of Canada support. Women for 50% and all the other influencer groups claim their movement is about the female voice being heard and respected, and it will deliver better decision making and better policy. The actions and the behaviors tell a different story. To put this in a larger context, not long ago, Canada had six female premiers in office at the same time. Four of them represented over 88% of the Canadian population. Did their gender make things better? Are things better? Where's the evidence? Most people would say nothing's really changed in politics. Identity politics, gender politics, will never bring us together. By design, they are meant to divide. The only path is one with heart, one where the divine feminine and the sacred male 
come together, combined that would change politics and give us better decision making. Thanks for watching. Hope you support the program. Be good, have fun, love each other.